crosses the center line 10 times, and we will add 1 to the count, and that gives us 11 for the number of runs. This is part 4 in our series on run charts. In part 1, we learned about run charts in general and why they are so helpful in seeing how process performance changes over time. We also learned how to determine if the variation we see in the performance is just common, normal, everyday variation or if the variation we see indicates that something different, something special is going on that indicates process performance has fundamentally changed. We learned that run chart rules can be used to help us detect those statistical signals of process change. In part two, we learned about the run chart rule for detecting trends. In part three, we learned the rule for detecting a shift. And here in part four, we will learn another run chart rule. This one is for runs. When the variation we see in a run chart is just the common everyday stuff or noise going on in the background, we would expect that the data is going to be above the center line sometimes and below the center line sometimes. Sometimes a few data points in a row might fall above, sometimes a few below, and as a result, if the process is truly random, we would also expect that the run chart line would cross the center line within a certain frequency. If it crosses the center line too often, it suggests something unusual is going on. It's a statistical signal for special cause variation. Same goes for not crossing the line often enough. That's also a statistical signal for special cause variation. So how do you know how often is too many or too few? With a run chart rule, of course. To apply the run chart rule for runs, we count the number of runs. And a run, in this context, is a series of consecutive data points above or below the center line. The easy way to count the number of runs there are on a run chart or a section of a run chart is counting how often the line that connects your data points crosses the center line and then add one. We can then use a table that lists the number of data points that are in your run chart or run chart segment that do not fall on the center line and then see how many runs are considered too few and how many runs are considered too many to suggest that non-random or special cause variation isn't going on. So let's look at a quick example. On this view of the graph, just consider the section of the run chart on our screen. There's 27 data points. We'll count the number of times the data line crosses the center line. It crossed the center line 13 times and then we add one, as I mentioned earlier. That gives us 14 for the number of runs. Now we look at a table of values for the run chart rule for runs. We have 27 data points in the section we are analyzing and the table tells us that the lowest number of runs we would expect to see if the variation is random is 10. The highest number of runs we would expect to see if there is just random variation in a series of 27 data points is 19. Our count of 14 falls inside those limits, so this section of the run chart does not seem to have special cause variation, at least on the basis of the run chart rule for runs. Let's look at a different section of the run chart. Starting at data point 151 and going to data point 180, we have 30 data points. None of them fall in the center line, so 30 is the count for the number of data points we will use on the table. Now let's count how often the center line is crossed. It crosses the center line 10 times, and we will add 1 to the count, and that gives us 11 for the number of runs. So let's look at the table of values for runs. In the row on the table for 30 data points, we see if there is only common cause variation, we should have a value of 11 or greater on the low end and 21 or lower on the upper end. Our value is 11, so this run chart section meets the criteria for only showing common cause variation on the basis of the number of runs. So that's how to apply the run chart rule for runs. In the next video, we will look at the last of the four run chart rules for outliers. On the ImproveTheSystem.com website page where this vlog is embedded, scroll down to see some notes and links to other resources that expand on the topic just presented. A complete transcript of what's presented here is also provided on that page. If you have any questions or comments, 
please contact me directly at micmick at improvethesystem.com and I'll do my best to reply to every inquiry. Thanks for watching.